Hello, my name is Eva Flicker. I'm a professor at the Department of Sociology at University of Vienna in Austria. And my fields of research are film sociology, visual sociology, gender studies, and group dynamics. Hello, my name is Lena Fuglmann. Um, I too work at the University of Vienna in the uh, Gender Equality and Diversity Unit, as well as the Department of Sociology as a lecturer. My fields of research are visual sociology, um, gender studies, and statistics. And first we express our thanks to the organizers of CALA to have us in this program. And also many thanks to Susan Liddy for inviting us to write the chapter in her collection. And our book chapter presents our study of the Austrian Film Gender Report, a study of 200 pages full of uh, statistics, data, explosive data, and um, just the uh, key results were published in a small booklet. Uh, and you can find all the results and reports online on our web pages. Let me briefly explain the history and context of our study, because there were relevant pre-investigations and political work and lobbying by FC Gloria, an association of, I think, um, more than 100 uh, women in the film industry in Austria. In 2016, FC Gloria lobbied the parliament to decide on the need of an independent professional study on gender in the Austrian film industry. And in the same year, I was asked to do a comprehensive study on the situation of women in the Austrian film industry and the study was financed by Austrian Film Institute and the Austrian Federal Chancellery Division II Arts and Culture. And it was extremely helpful and productive that the representatives of the named financing institutions, Barbara Frenzen and Iris Zappeheller, had strong interests in this study, which is not always the case with feminist studies. Together, we agreed to examine the past five years, namely 2012 and 2016. I mention this because we see that there were all that there were and still are strong feminist networks in different fields behind our study, and they are still very active and keep initiating new projects. We mentioned those also in our book chapter. Although the data have now an age of several years, they are still relevant, clues for political decisions and change of culture and working practice. Of course, we had a lot of important role models, studies made in other countries, in Sweden, in the UK, in the US, in Germany, etc. In our study, we analyzed five dimensions. These were funding and budgeting, division of labor in film departments, gender on screen with a standardized analysis of 100 fiction films released between 2012 and 2016, film festivals in Austria, including international films in Austrian film festivals, and fifth, film education at the university at the Film Academy, Wien. Because of short time, we can only mention very few results and the interrelation now and here. Please take it as a teaser for discussion and for reading more in our study online. Okay, over the um, different uh, stages of funding for a film project, uh, from the treatment to completion of uh, the production of the film, uh, we saw that the female, uh, the, sh the share of women shrinks, uh, the more the project proceeds, as well as the higher the its costs are in total. Um, so the question is, how do you measure gender in a film or gender of a film? Um, we counted according to two uh, different uh, or uh, models. Uh, one is the well-known Swedish model, uh, which includes the three pro uh, positions, uh, production, script writing and directing. Um, but we also created a new model uh, called the inclusion model. Um, since we regard film as a teamwork of more than just three departments, we try to include as many departments uh, as possible in this, um, uh, in this model. Uh, and we use the gender of uh, six, up to 16 departments uh, and their uh, heads or their department heads 
um, to analyze the correlation of staffing for a film team uh, with funding, with other staff in general, with gender on screen, um, and to, to see what the uh, differences are uh, for those. Uh, for handling the data, uh, we clustered uh, the projects or the films in quarters, so films with staff uh, of up to 25% women, films with staff between 26 and 50% women, uh, with staff between 51% and 75% women, and uh, finally 76% to 100% women. Um, what we saw according to, to the inclusion model is uh, that the higher the percentage uh, of women in the staff, uh, the lower is the funding of the film uh, and the more differentiated uh, gender roles are on screen. So there's certainly an impact of the staff behind the camera with, uh, uh, on the film itself and on the funding of the film. Um, and uh, for film festivals, uh, we took into account the uh, gender of the director of the program films, and we saw that uh, films with female directors received uh, less prize money uh, in, on average than films with male directors, but uh, proportional to their programming, they received more awards, uh, both by juries and audiences. Yes, uh, so are these results surprising? Yes and no, or no and yes. Are these results relevant? Yes, they are, because they show the bias in funding decisions. And there was another result that surprised us a lot. We analyzed the representation of sexualized violence on screen in 100 Austrian fiction films. And please take note that this was before the global Me Too debate. We differentiated in four dimensions, in sexualized microaggression, in sexual harassment, in sexualized assault and rape. And out of 100 analyzed films, 68, so more than two thirds showed sexualized violence with 353 scenes, which means in average five scenes per film deal with sexualized violence. This is also remarkable because this includes all genres of film. We miss comparable international data, so we do not know whether this is a specific Austrian symptom. Austrian films has a, have a reputation as socially critical film, therefore it often focuses on social problems and violence. The quantitative representation of the topic demonstrates that sexualized violence get remarkable attention in the visual discourse, or as we would say, in the discourse. We did not analyze how the sexualized violence is represented. A qualitative study is missing, and I started to do one this year with a colleague and with students. So what are our, our central takeaways from all of this research we did? First, our research shows that 80% of public funding uh, goes to men or went to men and only 20% to women. Uh, that's why we call for decision makers in funding bodies uh, to educate themselves in feminist and intersectional matters, to examine their bias in decision making uh, and to improve their uh, decision making. Uh, processes so that they are more inclusive. The same goes, of course, for policymakers, um, as their policies are the basis for uh, public funding. So that's uh, the first uh, big uh, thing we, we would ask for. The second thing uh, is that we saw in our results uh, that films with male directors have about a third female film crew in other positions, and films with female directors have about half female film crew through in other positions. Um, so that's why we call on male filmmakers to work with more with women. Uh, as more films are made by men, it is their responsibility to make their own uh, personal networks more inclusive so that part parity can be achieved sooner and easier. This becomes even more important because we saw that the more women behind the camera, the more films pass the Bethel Wallace test for a female and for male characters. So we switched the traditional uh, Bechtel Wallace test around um, to ask the questions, are there two men uh, who speak about something other than a woman? 
uh, and we saw that uh, even those uh, even th those questions can be more easily answered with yes in films uh, with uh, more women behind the camera. So one could say that diversity behind the camera increases uh, uh, the complexity of characters on screen. And thirdly, uh, we saw in our results that around um, only around a fifth of films programmed at festivals were, were made by female directors, uh, yet they received about half of the prizes, both by juries and by audiences. The recognition of female talent therefore depends uh, on, the, also depends on the gender makeup of ju juries. Uh, the more women there are in the jury, um, the more uh, films by female directors win prizes. That's why we call both for more inclusive jury practices, as well as for male critics to train their feminist and intersectional analytical skills uh, and broaden their understanding of what makes a good film. So that um, the female filmmakers can succeed better. That's uh, what we call for uh, and uh, we hope we can achieve this soon. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.